Hi everyone, we're back. I'm Kathleen. I'm Nancy. And we are On, on the, the needles. needles. So this is our second episode and we're so happy to be back with you guys. Oh. And we have a little helper today that might appear, Nancy's cat tulip. Yeah. Um, so we're just going to head on into our FOs. We've got a few new things to show you this week. And I am going to start out with this shawl that I knit. And this was part of a um, interweave knit along. And I work for interweave and we do knit alongs. Um, we usually have one going all the time. The, the last one just ended on the 17th. But I am so happy with this. It's just light and airy and it's 100% silk yarn. Um, it's called Mulberry by Louisa Harding and it's discontinued. Oh, here's Tulip. <laughs> it's discontinued, so sorry about that, but you might be able to find some on Ravelry. And um, I love the 100% silk and I always have enjoyed knitting with any sort of 100% silk because it is both warm and cool. And so you can wear it all year round, but especially this is so perfect for spring or, or over air conditioned offices or any, any sort of um, transitional weather. And I like this pattern. It's called Beach Leaf Shawl by Joan Forgione. And it Gorgeous. is um, a small shawl. It's not one of those huge sort of shlanket type things that are so popular right now. And I'm short and I just like this because you can wrap it around like a scarf or you could, you know, wear it however. One thing about this that I think is interesting is you probably can see it. This is right here is where I had to tie in a new um, ball and it's kind of, you can totally see it in real life. And so I'm going to take out this, uh, I just kind of wove it in diagonally, which is what I normally do with ends, but I think I'm going to have to um, duplicate stitch this because it it shows through, especially in the sun. Um, this what is about over done. Oh, you're, oh you're the, the ends. Throws. Yes, okay. yes. So this is one of the things that I struggle with. I normally will spit splice, you know, with um, natural fibers, but I should have done the, probably the Russian join with this because of the nature of the, the pattern is so open that it does show through. Look, you can totally see my hand. It's so it's pretty transparent. So anyway, you knit and you learn. So that's my first thing. And then everyone in our, well, not everyone, but many people in our knitting group are knitting the love note. And so I did jump on the bandwagon and Nancy showed hers last week. And so this is mine. And it is Magpie Fibers. DK and the color is um, creeping it real. And I 100% copied Tracy from the Grocery Girls because she knit this exact one and same color, everything. And I just love this color so much. My, um, pe my friends joke with me that my favorite colors are dull, drab, and dreary. And that's true to some extent. So, um, I, this is superwash wool, so I blocked it, um, I wet blocked it, and it did grow um, the long way, not so much the, uh, the width way, which was fine for what size I knit. And so it's pretty long. It's not cropped at all, which is totally fine with me, because I'm not, you know, that's not my, my favorite silhouette, the cropped look. But I do have to say that if you're in between sizes, like Nancy was mentioning last week, go down because this lace work is so open that it you, there's no resting row. There's no just uh, knit row between each of the lace yarn over rows. And so it's so open that it does um, stretch quite a bit. And then... Um, I did, I didn't do the wide neck. I added, when I picked up, for, they have you do a provisional cast on. When I picked up uh, the live stitches to do the neck, I just kind of, I added a few more rows and a few more decreases just to get more of a crew neck. Cause I don't love those wide 
and I didn't, I don't know. I just kind of made some changes on this one. So that's my other thing. And I really, really am loving it. And I do love my dull drab and dreary color. <laughs> this will go really well with all of my things. And then this, I'm where I'm going to show you a picture. This is called Schwan. And it's by Nora Gone, and it's kind of an older pattern. And this is what. Okay. So we've got some reflection oh. happening, but that's that's what it, the whole thing looks like. And I took a deep dive into my stash for this, uh, and I pulled out some uh, Stacy Charles fine yarns, and it's called Sahara, and it's a tape yarn, um, and it's I think it's linen and this pattern calls for two worsteds held together so pretty darn bulky knit on ten and a halves i knit this on eights and i just knit a bigger size because i wanted to use up this yarn it's been in my stash probably for 10 years so i am loving it and i'm not a big fan of the summer sweater because i just think that's kind of an oxymoron but this with the linen yarn it was it, it, it's very airy and and, and also, you know, it's got tons of holes in it. So it, I, I really do enjoy it. So that's my FOs. Good job. How about you? Oh, so what do I have? You uh, should see Nancy's stack of stuff for you guys. It's going to be good. It's going to be good. Ridiculous. Ridiculous. No, nope, it's going to be great. Okay. Um, I needed a little bit of relaxing knitting this week. Um, I, I, I've been really busy, so I just needed something for downtime. So I just kicked out a couple of dishcloths. This is uh, Grandma's favorite dishcloth pattern. I'm sure everybody knows that one. This is done out of some cotton stash. Honestly, I don't know what it is. Probably, I've been trying to do the lots of dishcloths just to get rid of my cotton <laughs> stash. It's like peaches and cream. Yes. Or and whatever. then I have this one. That's cute. And this one is made out of um, some variegated cotton that I found. Oh, that's pretty. And um, actually, I've got the skein here. There, uh, It's a cupcake. Is that what uh, they Cake? Cake. Or, yeah. Yeah. Um, and then it's sugar wheel cotton. It's a yarn bee. Yarn bee. But you can see all the fun colors. Um, so you're just going to keep knitting washcloths out of that until you have a thousand? Because yes. look yes. at how much yarn that is. Well... Um, I bought three skeins. Oh, I, I oh, very 3, seldom shop at Hobby Lobby. Uh, my mother has, here we go with the mask again. My mother has started crocheting after um, a few years of not. And so she found some gorgeous um, yarn at Hobby Lobby. And I went in to pick up some more for her. Of course, I'm in the yarn aisle and I know I don't need to shop there or anywhere. Yeah. But these uh, color wheels, these cotton color wheels were just so vivid. Um, oh boy. you know, honestly, I don't know that I need to do oh any more dishcloths right you now guys. in addition to the ones that I use, um, but they do make nice gifts and I truly am hoping someday the girls will be on their own. There's one right there. <laughs> And um, they'll need dishcloths for their new place. So these are just, I, you know, when I feel like it, I'll knit on a dishcloth. I don't do it too much because the cotton hurts my hand. There's just, there's so little stretch in mm -hmm. that. But they are a fun little, you know, one hour project you can kick out. Well, so, and I think that's a really good point about just having gifts because, you know, that's such a good thing to to stock your kind of gift drawer, your gift closet with knitted items, because then you're not scrambling at the end and like scrambling before the holidays, because you can always wrap up a couple of dishcloths mm -hmm. and a beautiful soap and you've Absolutely. got a great gift. Yeah. And, you know, or little face, you know, pads to wash mm -hmm. your face and some nice face soap. Yep. I've done that. And I would love to get that kind of gift. Hand oh, hand. well. Hand <laughs> hand. Okay. So um, the other, you know, I, I pulled out a couple of recent finishes because that way we can have something to show you guys that's finished. So um, this one is The Beach Days by Tracy Miller of The Grocery Girls. Just a really fun shawl. Um, 
This was all done out of Trilogy Yarns. The purple is my deep purple colorway. The variegated is uh, Enchanted Forest. And the green is Mr. Green Jeans. Uh, it took one skein of each. It's just a, a beautiful, very easy knit. But with the texture changes, it, it really it, gives it detail. Oh, I mean, Nancy, so, this turned out so So great. this is The Beach Days by Tracy Miller. It's a pay for pattern. One thing to note here is that purple seems like it's a bright color and seems like it's going to kind of be a spoiler. But it goes with so many things, especially if there's so many um, shades of purple. If you're struggling to have a solid in one of your projects, pull out your purples and just see what you've got that's going to go because it goes, I mean, it goes with blue, it goes with yellow, it goes with pink, it goes with, you know, this beautiful green. So just keep that in mind. And as the older we get, uh, the more we want to wear purple because that's pretty close to royalty. Yes, we oh, earned it. Yes. Um, and I do like purple and I do like green, as you can tell from my next objects that I'm going to show. This is Flying Foxtail Shawl by Stephen West. Kathleen showed hers last week, so I thought I would uh, even the game and show mine. Uh, that is the front side, and then this is the, the back. So you can totally wear it either way. I did the shorter version. He does have a longer version and a shorter version. Um, I am not that tall either, and I just I don't need a shawl going down to my waist. Yeah. Um, mine's a little bit longer. I kind of wish I'd have done the shorter mm -hmm. version, but like mine ends with a whole foxtail at the end, and oh. and uh, Nancy's ends with a the half. kind of a half one, yeah. which it it's probably I mean each one of these is several inches long. Yeah. So, um, and uh, there again, I use trilogy yarns. Um, the deep purple and the enchanted forest are the the same colors I used in the beach days, but I really but look love. how different yes. it looks. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, so that's. And is this like, DK or is this fingering? This is fingering. fingering this is okay. done on my merino cashmere nylon okay. base, the plush base. Yeah. And which is a um, couple of my fingerings, that and the glamours are very plump, plump yeah. fingerings. They can be, they yes. can be several. Games. One thing I wanted to show here this has that um, I cord bind up, and I didn't mentioned that last time but it's such a nice bind off mm -hmm. if you ever get a chance to work it just look how nicely it finishes stuff and it works great for for necklines i love it on necklines um last time we podcasted i was talking about doing the i cord bind off on my rocket tee and i'm just going to mention this i did it rolls that was my fear and uh I maybe should have done a gauge swatch on that one. I, I tell you guys, I don't do gauge swatches, and um, it's fairly generous in size. So I probably will frog it, and no, I know I will frog yeah. it and redo it because that was out of the that yarn that's made from recycled water bottles. Oh, and so, shoot! Yes. So I do want to work with that. Do you think the yarn? bloomed a lot when you or was I didn't stretch it. oh you didn't even I block didn't even it. block okay. it yet because I didn't finish it I still have the sleeves okay. to do and uh last time we podcast I showed you the I think four sweaters I had cast <laughs> on so I got the beekeeper done um this marker right here is at before you even divide for the sleeves that's where I was last time so um, I did you get this knit done. Like the wind. I love it. The color is a it's um, like a good cherry red. It's coming across more orange there, but it's just a really pretty cherry red. That there again, it goes with you know you can wear it with jeans. You can wear it with you know black. Um, and I love and this maybe. bot. This trim on the bottom is. Uh, what is it? A, a three, three by one. one. And three that makes one such a nice mm -hmm. bottom. It's just, it's decorative and it's not super, super stretchy, but it, mm -hmm. it is really nice. So this one is done, blocked, ready to go in the sweater drawer. In the sweater drawer <laughs> for, for fall. Yes. And I have one hoe. Um, I did get one sock done. 
Oh, I love that stripe. This has not been blocked or anything. <laughs> I don't block my socks. I make them, I throw them in the, I wear them, I throw them in the washer. So I, honestly, I don't block them. Um, so this is Felici in the colorway Punky. And that, was, is that Knit Picks? Knit Picks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this was last year's, I think this was last year's release of colors. Um, I saw that they just released the 2020 colors in the Felici. Honestly, I've been there twice. And I actually got as far as putting it in my cart. And then I thought, what am I doing? Uh, I have so much Felici from the last two years still. So I never uh, worked with it. Is oh, it? it's so nice. Yeah. And it's a uh, 75 Superwash Merino 25 cotton. And so, what uh, what size do you do your socks on? I do them on a one, mm -hmm. a nine inch circular. I do them toe up. I do, um, I think it's a version of Judy's Magic cast on it's kind of the figure eight cast on for the toe yeah, you can't even see it and and then i do fish lips kiss heel my favorite and uh just a two by two rib then at the top yeah. yeah and i don't count the rows of my leg um it just kind of depends on my mood i never make them super long because then you need to do increases to get mm. over the calf mm -hmm. uh, i'd like to say muscles yeah <laughs> <laughs> let's just say that let's just say that um, and I've done, you know, just real shorties for summer, but, um, so I just knit until I think it's long enough. A lot of the time what I'll do is I'll do like a half, I'll, I'll do the leg almost as long as my foot. Now uh, you can see oh, there. That's a good idea. I, I didn't, I'm that much shorter, but, um, yeah. And then I just do a uh, knit through the back loop knit two together through the back loop, bind off on the cuffs. Um, I have to be, I, I try to make it very loose because um, some people have bigger feet than others and it's hard to sometimes get that cuff on over your ankle. Well, and one you thing know. that's interesting about socks is that people complain about socks falling down and, if, and, and many knitters think that's because the cast on is too loose, but nor, but actually it's, a lot of times the cast on is too tight and so it, you can't pull it up as far as you want it and it kind of works its way down mm -hmm. so having a really loose cast off is important for to fit over the you know your heel to get it on but also so they stay up mm -hmm. and that is it for my finished objects okay so so here we go with on the needles our favorite part. our favorite part and I haven't quite figured out yet how to drink coffee through a straw with a mask on. So you um, gotta kind of go on. I know. So I apologize if this looks odd. Uh, I don't want to put a hole on my mask because that defeats the purpose. So as you can see, we are masking up again. Yes. We don't live together. We're trying to. We want to not. We're doing our part to knock this thing out. I mm -hmm. saw a post this morning. Uh, I'm not gonna say. It. Oh, um. <laughs> so funny. I'm sorry. Well, but yeah. yeah. We and we, you know, like we said last time, we care about each other and we care about all of you. And um, to show that during this time of COVID, we we mask up and we highly encourage you to do that too. And that's our PSA. That's our day. PSA. Thanks for coming to our <laughs> TED talk. Um, okay, so I've had this is called the Trellis Top by Carol Feller. Beautiful shade of and oh, so eggplant color. I know it is that's so pretty gorgeous. and so this is a traveling stitch obviously pattern and it's when I first started it I'm like okay this is not going to be social knitting and then once you get into it like any pattern you kind of get in the rhythm and now I can do it at knitting group but this is knit with Erin Moore light from the fiber company and I am telling you guys, if you can get some, get your hands on this yarn, do it. We are knit, people in our knitting group and Mimi, my wife, just knit the um, Glimmer crop with it. And it is fantastic. It's a DK. This color is Bronog, like um, Kenneth Bronog. And it's tweed, and it has, it, I mean, this one is kind of, it's a pretty subtle tweed, but it does have some red in there and some green, and um, I just am in love with it. And everyone I know who's knit, have you knit with it? 
I have not. Oh, you have to. It mm -hmm. is the best. And so um, this is, again, the trellis top by Carol Feller. And uh, did you get that at the studio? Yes, I did. Yes. I thank you. I thank you. I got this at Knit Knit the Studio, which is R L Y S, and um, it's just south of Spokane. And she does do mail, uh, mail order pickup, curbside, all that kind of stuff. So we love her, Chris. Yeah, we miss. That's oh, we where do. our Tuesday night knit group meets, and we miss her. We miss the group. We zoom every week, but it's not the same as seeing each other in person. No. So. It sure isn't, but we do love our Zoom. Yes. And so last time, my sort of aspirational knitting was this um, Clockwork by Stephen West. And look, you guys, I totally so cast it on, and I shouldn't have stopped fun. in the middle of the row because I could have showed you the whole thing. But... Well, every podcaster does that. Yeah. So um, it's mm -hmm. so much fun. And this is a, this is just a, you slip, slip it all the way up so you have these lines in the middle and then in the back you um, slip with the yarn in front so you can get that you can keep this stockinette these stockinette vertical lines going and this is with um i mentioned last time frolicking feet and this is cocky khaki however you say that khaki khaki and the other one is blue jeans tomato 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 right um so I'm really enjoying this. It's a super fun pattern. It's not difficult. It is, you know, I do, I love a slip stitch pattern because you, it, you get that sort of rhythm of slipping the stitches. Well, you must knit sometime. You, you do. Slip. Yes, you do. You, you knit, so you back. knit when you're knitting with this color. So oh, you knit, huh. you, so here you can oh, see you like there's a knit and a pearl, and oh, then you I pearl on this. the backside. Yep. Yeah. So you slip mm -hmm. for two rows and then you knit. Uh, you mm. knit stock and it for two rows. It's beautiful. It's in person, you know, it's just stunning. Love it. Stunning. And I'm really, Is that a I, large shawl? No, it's no. not that large. Okay. And that's I, that's one of the reasons why I chose it because a lot of Stephen, I mean, he's like six something. So he pulls off these shawls mm. that are just enormous. And um, that's not my thing. So, and this is part, this clockwork is. Um, any Stephen West pattern, the grocery girls are doing a Stephen West uh, knit along. And so this is my project for that. And it's supposed to be done mid-August. And I think I'm going to be able to do it. I just started um, the second part where where my markers are is where you then start these move over. Oh. These slip stitches mm -hmm. move over. So I'm knitting, you knit another line, like the, you knit another one of these lines, uh, these like rows of garter stitch to separate and then you um you move the the slip stitch to, yeah. to fall in the middle of what's, these other ones is that a triangle shawl or what kind of no it's shape? kind of just a um it's kind of the same shape as this, like this one that i showed yeah yeah okay. it's kind of the same shape actually it's pretty much exactly the same shape oh, as this uh -huh. so yes. yeah what are these crescent crescent shawls, yeah I think crescent uh -huh. yeah yeah mm, so nice Super fun. Gorgeous, Kathleen. Well, thank you. So that, and that's all I have on. I haven't been casting a lot of stuff <laughs> on because I have to maybe finish some stuff. I know that's a novel Said idea. Said no knitter ever. Said no, yeah, right. Okay. I do kind of go, sorry. I do kind of go in, in cycles where I cast a whole bunch of stuff on, my cast on itis, and then I kind of get finish itis. And I want to, you know, I get overwhelmed because I have like 12 bags of projects. So I kind of go through and finish stuff off and usually that happens around this time of year because I'm looking at all this stuff and thinking I sort of want to wear that stuff that I started so I I go on a finishing spree so I'm, I'm kind of moving into that okay well I have two whips that I have actively worked on since um, our last podcast and I may have mentioned I've been on this cleaning kick lately and, and getting rid of stuff. And I have this nice big wicker basket in my living room that is kind of a catch-all for random yarns. So I just and, and so I thought, well, I would empty it out. And at the very bottom, I found some sock blanks, Christmas sock blanks, that I had bought for the girls. And I put their names on them, and I gave them to them for Christmas. And I said... 
I will make these for you. That probably was 15 years ago. Oh. Maybe. <laughs> and then they kind so, of made their way to the bottom of that. Well, I found two. I think I did make one pair up. So um, this is the sock blank. And um, this is, uh, let's see, it's, it's a Christmas one. It's from uh, Flat Feet. And I conjoined creations. I don't know if they're still doing these. Um, like I say, this was from... You know, I think we have it upside down. Oh, yeah, because the reindeer. <laughs> there you go. Um, and it's uh, a full sock blank that has been knit. Each section are um, looks like mirror images. Oh, no, they're different. Oh, yeah, because they're red. I should and uh, look before I speak. Oh, no, that goes down here. Yeah, so they are mirror images of each other. So um, you'll have two identical pair of socks. So do you uh, start knitting on? I've never knit on the stock. Do you yeah. start, so you start knitting on the end. Yeah, one and end then... will come loose, and you just unravel it, <laughs> and it totally gives you that ramen mm, look. Yeah, and um, especially when it's been in storage for fifteen years, it's it's been held together a long time. Can I show this one? Yeah, or I can show it. So, um, so this is what I have done. It's it's a a true Christmas sock. Uh, so nine, this, if you're giving inches. as a gift, you might want to block. You would want to block yeah. these. Um, it, it it will loosen up. Um, but nine inch circulars, uh, the, um, the the figure eight cast on for the toe, I increased to the uh, sixty four stitches, and uh, very soon I'll be doing the fish lips kiss heel, which is my favorite uh, up the leg, and then a two by two rib on the cuff. Is your sock, is your go-to sock just these sort of vanilla, vanilla socks? Sock. Yeah, just... I like them too because then it really showcases the yarn. But I have, an, I have an idea and I don't know, I haven't looked at all the toe patterns to see if this has been done or not yet. But when I look at my feet, my feet don't look like this. My toes don't look like this. What, your feet don't go yeah, like this? Yeah, they kind of go up straight on one side. Oh, I can do this so you guys can see it. Anyway, straight on one side and the other side kind of comes up. So it's this kind of a mm -hmm. shape. So I was thinking, what if you did the same cast on, but only increased on one side? Oh my kept gosh, the, you have to try that. I, yeah, I kept the, if there's any designers out there, I said it first, but <laughs> keep one line straight, TM. one side, um, not no increases and increase the other side um, and maybe increase every row instead of every other row. I don't know, I, but it's funny what you think of when you're barefooted and you're looking at your feet. Yeah. So anyway, well, I usually is... do the rounded toe, so it yeah. doesn't. It's a little more because my feet, you know, are more rounded than pointy. Mm. So there are some different toes out there, but that there is, I, but I love yeah, that idea. I uh, I thought about that. And then my other one is the Weekender, and I did show this two weeks ago. So after I finished the Beekeeper, I was trying really hard to get it at least get the shoulders joined so you can see what it looks like. Um, oh, I have a mess. I don't think I'm in the middle of a row though. No. Okay, so where I was last time, I was up to here. So it's knit in the round. Um, this I think is the back. It's got this the fun little slip stitch detail up the um, up the front and the back. It's a reverse stockinette. And so I managed to finish the cat's back. Hi, Julie. This is the front. So I've separated for the sleeves. I've knit up to do a short row shaping because the um, this ribbing kind of joins with the back. You do a three needle bind off. So it, you do the short row shaping so it'll fit your shoulders. And then um, bind off for the neck so and it is, i love I was, and this is rowan uh it is the rowan um lima oh yeah, lima. lima yes yeah and lima color yeah so it's 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 a chain ply it's got it's blue and green it's absolutely gorgeous i was reading the pattern or i was binding off last night and I, it had a really funky find off that I'd never heard of. And so I, I actually called Mimi, uh, Kathleen's wife, because I know she's knitting it too. Mm -hmm. And um, I thought she was ahead of me in her pattern. She's not. She's not. No. And so I, 
she figured out she it was probably a provisional cast off uh, to match the provisional oh, cast the, um, um, provisional bind off mm. and to match the provisional cast on. But I opted not to do the it's provisional. The tubular. She, yeah. she calls for the tubular. Yeah. Oh, provisional. Tubular. Yeah, tubular. Thank you. Yeah. I need more coffee. Totally tubular. Yeah. <laughs> So the cat's not falling out of the tree this no, time. No, she's trying to get out. She's trying to get out through the slider, and she's jumping up and down. Because her... I had to put our cat tree out on the deck so we could podcast in here. <laughs> We're inside because it's going to be like 95 today or yeah. some crazy number. And so, oh, she wants out. Okay. Yeah, so um, she may want out. Um, so anyway, I didn't understand that, and then so she explained that to me. So I just did a regular cast off because I did not yeah. do a, a tubular cast on. And you can't. I mean, and I think it's it's so pretty. I think yeah. it's totally fine. And I don't mind doing the tubular cast on, but I very much mind doing the tubular bind off. It's because like it's a Kitchener, Kitchener stitch. Yes. And, and who anyone loves? who tells you it's not is a lion because it is. Yes. So anyway, that is um, that's all I've been working on this weekend. I've been busy in other areas, and I can get into that maybe later. Okay. Hey. All right, so mm. now we're to the part of our podcast where we show some of our favorite things. And I um, am really into supporting a lot of, um, of indie shops and uh, shops owned by people of color. And I uh, ordered one of these from Neighborhood Fiber Co. And this uh, is Carita, and she has owned this company in uh baltimore i believe for about 11 years and we went to uh, mimi and i did a the vogue uh, knitting live virtual and one of the shopping option uh opportunities was at her shop and so we ordered this very cool um um lbg lbtg q plus um pin for um just uniting everyone and around knitting so you can see it's they're holding a, a ball of yarn and she's also got a black lives matter um one of these that we also got but i didn't bring that so anyway check her out Ni neighborhood fiber co she's an indie dyer and she is um very talented and then um from our favorite chris at the studio i've got this because last week i was talking about being a, a yarn snob and this is from Polly Studios in Russellville, Kentucky. And each one of these is made by hand by their um, potter, whose name is Amanda. And um, so each one of is a little bit different. And Mimi uh, got one for Christmas that is beautiful, bright red, and it's got knit at the studio in the in the circle. And I was looking at their website and they've got a ton of options of different yarn stuff, funny and not so funny and, you know, all kinds of cute stuff. And they've got gorgeous yarn bowls as well. So this is Poly Studios and um, love it. Use it all the time. And it's got a good, it's a good size because I like myself a big cup of coffee. <laughs> And then I, I used to do some work for um, Alpaca Direct is a company in Hayden, Idaho, and alpacadirect.com is their website. They've got a good online business. Mm -hmm. And they have, I've got all different kinds of sizes in this little box, but they have these stitch markers and they're very similar to the coconut stitch markers, which I love. Mm -hmm. But what I like about these in particular are that their small stitch markers are just slightly bigger than the coconuts. And I like that because I like using a small marker that because it doesn't slip slip under the stitches. So I try to use as small as I can with whatever needles I'm using. And these I can use up to like a seven. And I really like that. So I highly recommend these from Alpaca Direct and they are really affordable they're like six bucks or something and you get 40. so that's my spiel this time how about nice. you well i have a couple mugs that i had pulled out um this first one is my sheep mug oh i love that and i use Look this for tea <laughs> this fun i bought this in a little clothing store up in Newport, Washington, which is 
oh, probably about 60 miles north of us, uh, pretty close to the Canadian border. You're getting closer as the more north you go. So um, this is my little uh, teacup. And, you know, it's just a commercially made one. She had several different designs there, but only one sheep. So that is, um, oh, this is that. <laughs> yeah. and my second mug is a coffee mug. This is Knit Picks uh, with the unicorn knitting. When um, I left to work in the medical field and just after my husband died, I thought, well, I have to go out and find a job now because I'm supporting grandchildren. And I wanted to work for the school system. So I went to work as a paraeducator um, at one of our local grade schools and uh, the mascot was unicorns. So when I saw this, I thought, I too am a knitting unicorn. So I had to That's buy the this. Best and mascot I left, ever. Yeah, I left this, um, no, I took it, I, I left the job and uh, transferred to a different school doing something else. But I took this with me. And so now uh, my knitting unicorn coffee mug. I love mug. it. And the last thing I have, and this thing is big, so I'm going to see if I can get it up here without. Oh, yeah. This basket. Look at this, guys. Isn't that gorgeous? I keep this by my chair. Actually, I have my cozy memories in here with a lot of scrap yarn, and then I throw my project bags on top. I got this at uh, Tolt Yarn over in Carnation. I know that you can order these. And I had been on the fence about um, ordering one. I really wanted one, but do I need any more baskets? But uh, one day I was driving over to the, the west side of the state to visit family. And I stopped at Tolt, and they had one left. And it was like, it's meant to be. So I purchased it, and I love it. it can, you can throw a lot of projects in there if you want. So I, I have a funny story. I got one of those baskets, but because I'm dull, drab, and dreary, it's not beige. And I'm kind of jealous of Nancy's cultural. But the other thing about the, that place is that um, these are all handmade, right? Those baskets, yes, uh -huh. they're handmade by women and mm -hmm. um, told orders them in and they're they sell them at a pretty reasonable price. And I was, it was the cheapest I had seen in yeah. there. And, and the proceeds go back to that collective, mm -hmm. I believe. I'm not, mm -hmm. I'm not totally positive, but I'll put it in the show notes. Yeah. That's really nice. So do you have any ask? Is that it for your favorites this week? Uh, that is it for my favorites. I do have some um, dream knitting. I do it. We'll do that. Um, I haven't cast on the sweater. It's right up here. There it is, right next to the keep calm and cast on sign. Um, I am going to do that. But the other dream knitting I want to show, and I'm just going to, where's claws all fell to the floor? <laughs> it's like, you know, pick up sticks. Sorry, guys. Okay. So um, many of you have heard of Matt Akers from Makers Knitting. He just released the ebook of um, Sock Patterns During Pride. And Matt reached out to me, I'm going to say maybe two months ago, six weeks ago, and was wanting to design a cowl for Pride and wondering if I would like to be part of that. And of course, I said yes. So he, he just got it done. Oh, it just gosh. went to the um, tech editor. And it is the Counting, oh, that's not good. Counting Rainbows sh uh, cowl. So the main part of this, and I apologize, that's, that's not good. It's kind of coming through. It's yeah. so pretty. But the, the main part of the cowl is done in the stormy weather, which is, um, it's a gray just kind of a good neutral gray. And then all the color works part was done with my uh, mini pride sets. And the color work is brioche. So it's, it's flat brioche. So if anybody is intimidated by doing brioche, um, don't be. It's, once you get the hang of it, it becomes very rhythmic. Rhythmic? Rhythmic. That too. Yep. That too. Um, oh. Mm -hmm. 
the mick. <laughs> That's <laughs> for you, you Ray. For? Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. Sorry. Our stuff keeps going. So I am I'm gonna offer these up for sale in the shop. I am gonna cast one on for me, but I'm also gonna cast one on using. Sorry, I really thought I had my act together. Um, I, I'm going to cast one on in sport weight in my sportacular base. So I'm going to do one in just this really neutral cream. And then my gradient is a various shades of burgundy from dark to very light. So this will be kind of... Yeah, it's, it's about. yeah I am, I am going to take some pictures. Hopefully they'll be up on the website by the time this goes live of some kits that I'm going to put together. Now on my on the pride and in the pattern, it calls for six colorways. Um, it looks fairly long on Matt. I don't know how tall he is, but I think I am going to eliminate the last colorway because I don't like a really big long cowl. And so my fading sets are in sets of five. So I will put together some kits for the shop. I'll, I'll get them photographed and put them up. But um, that is what I'm going to be casting on soon. I think it's going to be an absolutely fun shawl. And I like brioche. brioche is, I love brioche. Yeah, it's so it's, pretty. It's just fun. So yeah, so that's my dream knitting. And I like, what I like about this pattern quite a bit is that, I mean, it's rainbow, mm -hmm. but it's not like in your face rainbow, which yes. that's pretty cool. Yes. And uh, I'm going to, I'll say this now, um, when I put together the kits for anything for the shop and I show a picture of a pattern, the pattern is always included. I will either gift you the pattern or um, I will give you a downloadable code for the pattern. So it it is, so you pay for the yarn, the pattern is um, free to you, my gift for, for so, shopping with me. So generous. Okay, so that is dreams do you have any acquisitions i have none um i have some finally i'm getting some undyed yarn it's oh. been at a premium right now that with everything going on the mills have slowed mm. down uh shipping has slowed down and um i i was able to get some it will be delivered today i'm excited Yay. um so that is one acquisition. And my other one is, oh, so we mentioned that the French supply place was going out of business. They had very few French bags left in, yeah, in, yeah. in their shop. Tolt over in uh, Carnation, Tolt Yarn, they have them. So I went yeah. to the where, their website. They still had some. I uh, picked out the, the wax canvas and the plum bag. And then I thought, oh, do I really need another you bag? Do, do I know. need? Of course I need. Yeah. But I didn't pull the trigger. Okay. Um, yesterday I was watching uh, Ray and Kevin. And uh, their podcast is called um, Needles, at, Needles at the Ready. Needles at the Ready. Yeah. And they mention us. So we were yeah. so thankful for that. And, and we actually Zoom knit with them and several other podcasts. So much which fun. Is, Without COVID, we never would have met you. Wonderful. No, that's one of the silver linings, Fun isn't it? People, yes. But anyway, so Ray and Kevin were talking about how Tolt was going out of business and that no one would ever Not be Tolt, able to French get French supply. Or French supply, yeah. I'm sorry. And so I pulled the trigger. Yay! I it. I'm so excited to get it. I don't Yay. have any French bags, mm -hmm. French supply bags. You're going to love it. Um, I. I feel bad that they're going out of business. A lot of businesses are struggling right now. Yeah, but they, um, um, they're they not a victim of COVID, I don't think, it, because they had planned to close down. I think they wanted to do their sort of boutique um, offerings, <laughs> and they were so popular that they stayed in business right, for an yeah. extra year. So yeah, I think this so. was a planned sort of ending of that. Yeah. But I, I hope that um, somebody buys the company if they're interested in selling or you know, because they, they are nice bags. Mm -hmm. And then one of the, um, but if you love those bags and can't get a hold of one, Hohe and Co is Hohe Locatelli's oh. company, and she makes gorgeous Beautiful leather bags, bags yes. that are just stunning. So yeah. you you might be able to find that. So that was my acquisitions for the week. Cool. Two, two weeks. 
two weeks, weeks of acquisitions. Yeah, yes. I know, I'm sure I got something. I just, I don't know. Well, I did. I got this pin that I showed. I got this. And then we got a couple of t a couple of um, t-shirts that really aren't aren't uh, are, are adults only. If you know what I'm saying. Well, some, yeah. So that brings us There's to the so, naughty, uh, yeah. naughty, naughty knitting bags. Right. Naughty, naughty knitting sacks. Right. Yes, that seems to be the rage right now. Yes. So I don't know. I may have. To, I I looked at the website actually. There again too. Yeah. Um, I don't know. It's. Uh, uh, yeah, I don't know. Know. <laughs> sometimes sometimes you're in the mood, sometimes you're not. Yeah, so. Okay, um, have, have you got anything else? No, okay. we're on to Nancy's shop. So we're going to promote the shop a little bit. Um, I told you about the cowls, uh, the, the counting cowls kits that will be up in the shop. Um, I do have another um, thing that is going to be up in the shop. Um, our friend Carmen, and we have talked about her before, designed this gorgeous cowl um, for me. This is knit out of uh, Midwest Sunset. It is done with the provisional cast on and then the lattice stitch up the front. Then you do a purl bump. Let's see, there's right up. You can see it. It's right there. And then stockinette. So it's, it's stockinette on the inside. And then you join your um, yarn with your provisional cast on. And um, honestly, I haven't looked at the pattern, but I think this is a brioche rib with a little pico bind off. Yep, it is. Yeah. So mm -hmm. um, is that the bottom? This is the, the, the rib is the bottom. Yeah, that's yes. so pretty. Um, so that is oh, it's a it single skein pattern. And Carmen designed this. Carmen designed it. Ooh, and I love she it. she does it's a it's a free pattern with purchase that she honored me with. So I will put together some kits. I'm thinking. Mm -hmm. So this is the Midwest sunset. Isn't that amazing how different so, that yeah, looks? Yeah, something. Yeah. Like that. But I'm thinking, um, sexy cowboy, my favorite. Yeah. So I could, you could do a sexy cowboy. Like I say, it's a single skein. Poison, poison would also be one that would be fun to do that out of, or um, gridiron. This is for you mm. football fans out there because I don't know if we're going to have a football season or not this year. So you can always have. Um, a gridiron lattice stitch. So I'll be putting some patterns up for that. Um, if there's a color that I don't put up in a kit and you're interested in doing this, if you purchase a skein of my yarn, just send me out a little message um, when, with your order that you want the pattern for the cowl. And that is fingering weight? Did this you say is that? fingering, okay. yes. Yeah. That is fingering weight. Um, you could do it in a sport. I don't know if I would do it in a DK. Um, be a lot wider. Yeah, yeah. it'd be a Which, you know, bit. some people like. Yes. And then um, I mentioned uh, the, the counting cowls from uh, um, counting rainbow cows from that. So I'm just going to put together some kits. I have a, a green fade and um, a nice charcoal. Um, this looks like it's green, but this charcoal is just or wicked, just black would be a good combination for that or you know you can do black with pink that'd be pretty that wouldn't that be fun yeah or you could do pink with shades of black and gray Ooh. so you can but I'll, I'll put some tips up this afternoon tomorrow at the latest but hopefully they'll be up before um this airs or airs so famous. It's posted, right? Uh huh. <laughs> Probably get it uploaded. And um, I wanted to talk about um, some of the clubs I have going. I have the Princess Bride Sock Club, which is a three month subscription. Um, there is no end date to it yet. So if you do subscribe, you'll get three months uh, depending on where I am at in the collection. I am going to show la um, last or this month sock uh because i think everybody's got it by now but this was um prince humperdinck 
<laughs> so, I love it. So it's purples, greens. Oh, um, so pretty, there's man. some, you know, black it. speckles, some other color. Oops, I guess the camera's up. The other color speckles. And then I paired it with a yellow for the um, heels, toes, and um, cuffs. And the pattern that I used last month, because every month in the kit, you will get um, gifted a sock pattern from any sock designer that I choose. The first three months, I'm using Tracy Miller from the Grocery Girls. So last month's pattern was Hello Sunshine. I had to stop and think of Hello Sunshine. And it's not a secret. So um, this month's pattern... It, is going to be coffee talk for coffee talk socks and so you will get the full skein of the color for august and a coordinating mini so i have that um, i also have my hocus pocus advent calendar yay i'm which, excited for that <laughs> which is a 12 day uh 12 days of minis and on the 13th day you get a full 100 gram skein I am using uh, fingering weight, um, although with the minis, there may be some sparkle thrown in just to, for, you know, for the season. Um, and then there'll be goodies. You'll get, uh, you know, I've, I've been collecting some goodies and making goodies, not edible ones. You, you'll get edible ones, but <laughs> nothing that I've made. Um, so there'll be a little something, something in each day that you open your advent. So that's the Hocus Pocus. Um, it, there's still spots available. I probably will be closing that for sure by the end of, or by the 1st of September, because it will ship out uh, around the 20th, you know, 25th, somewhere in there. So you'd be sure and get it by the 1st of October. And then you can do any 13 days you want. If you want to do the first 13, if you want to work it so that you get, you open your full 100 gram mini on Halloween day. You can do that too. And then I have my Christmas advent calendar available. And that one I probably will close for sure by the end of October. Um, it's 24 20 gram mini skeins, all new colorways that I have not dyed for the shop before. And a 100 gram full skein um for christmas day so all new colorways they may or may not be released in the shop i, I haven't later. decided yet yeah, a later date and there again each day you're going to get some little goodie um, and with the christmas advent calendar i have two designers that are designing patterns uh, one is a shawl the other is a throw um, and there may be a third pattern. I'm not sure yet. Ooh. And I, I kind of heard, and I think I took this the right way, that maybe somebody will be designing something for the Halloween advent. Yay! So that would be fun. That would so, be fun. Anyway. Because I, I bought that. Thing, yeah. So I, might, I <laughs> it's, highly encourage it's that. It's going to be fun. It's it's going to be fun. Um, and gosh, I, I've been dying up a storm. I'm working on wholesale orders and I'm working on orders that I've been getting. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Um, I, of course, I'm not working now, but then I don't work in the summer times anyway. And um, it's nice to have income because yeah. I'm still raising grandchildren and gosh darn it, they like to eat. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I appreciate each and every order. And I thank you so much from the bottom of my heart and the top. The whole, the, middle, the whole thing, the whole darn thing. Yep. Yeah. So, so I think uh, I think yeah, that's we're it. Still and we're under, under an hour. hour. Ooh, that, that was our goal. goal. Yep. Yeah. Um. So, we want to thank you guys again for everything. We were so happy with the um response to our first podcast and all those thumbs up. We just really appreciate it. Any sort of reaction is great input for us and all the comments. So we encourage you to subscribe and like and leave us a comment, share with us what you're knitting. That was that was really fun to see what people had on the needles. And um, as always, we'll have the show notes down below. Oh, did you do a Ravelry? I did do a Ravelry oh. and that I added that to the show notes. And the Ravelry is called On the Needle. The group on Ravelry is called On the Needles, um, a knitting podcast. And see so, how, what a poor co-host I am. I didn't 
even know she's yet. She's not a she's not a Ravel reuser like yeah. I am. Well, so. I, kind I, of. I, I, I use it. I you use it, it for I the database upload, aspect. Yeah. Of, yeah. Um, so we just want to say thank you so much. We appreciate it and support your local yarn shop people. We need to keep them in business and um, we've seen some that are going out of business that make us sad. So support your sad. local shop. And until next time, knit on. Bye. Mm. Thank you. Bye.